for everybody that's a fan that misses things like the Omega car, and especially the King Zero build, your time is coming. See, I just ruined that. I don't mean that in a facetious way, but like, do what you gotta do. I like my Jesus wearing a tuxedo t-shirt. It says, I wanna be formal, but I'm here to party. Well, I think it's finally time to come back and talk about the Omega car and also, of course, the King Zero, which is effectively a replica of the Lancia Stratos Zero prototype from 1970, but with a V12 engine. But I wanted to start over here with the Omega car because none of you guys have gotten to see this in quite some time. And obviously I've been stressed out, chasing a lot of things, trying to make a life, trying to build the YouTube and work this, the YouTube aspect of my career in with all of the builds, still teaching John, Genus Garage and everything else. And I'll be straight with you. It has been the hardest thing in my life because when doing YouTube, it seems your life changes every six months. New doors open up. There's new opportunities for you to grow as an individual in what you're doing in terms of cars and builds and professionalism, but also keeping YouTube and that working and also sticking up for values that matter more to me than getting views. Um, so with regard to the Omega car, this is something I originally started building back in 2012. Uh, and it, uh, it's not a body on a frame, it's a monocoque chassis. And I built this to be a sustainable, uh, more and more sustainable manufacturing technique, uh, recyclable, low environmental impact, low energy and highly efficient. From a couple years ago when I was building the, the uh, Lycan with the students and helping them, uh, and we were having that team. We got this out and Brian and I worked on it and did some great things, but it's sad. And the reason it's sad is because I did a lot with it and you guys got to see it. it was cool in the views, but the next step came and I needed to move on to work on some other things. So I, I do have to point something out. I know there are people who comment on builders such as myself or even Freddie Tavarish and say we never finish builds. Well, the truth be told, when you're one person and doing so many different things, for the sake of YouTube and everybody watching and learning, as well as balancing, and I hate to say it, the nature of the algorithm, sometimes there are projects that don't make sense to continue or continue with at that point. So as an example, we're gonna, I wanna get up and show you guys the details of it sitting. The King Zero here, I am not going to touch until, and if you just wanna walk on this side, sorry, we didn't plan this as well as I may have should until the Formula One hot rod build is finished. Now this is gonna be finished in a couple of weeks. Uh, I'm really excited about it. The last thing I have to do is mount the oil cooler here, uh, shifters in, drivetrains in, everything, and, and then I have to do plumbing and wiring and such. So it's gonna be really exciting, and then it's gonna go away and get painted, and then do something fun in public. But I have an obligation to finish this because this is actually a build of mine, personally, that is going to go to an individual. So that's an outside factor that I have to make work. And because of that, and the ability of trying to make a living and keep moving forward, something as cool as the King Zero has had to wait. And I mentioned a couple of videos, but I know a lot of people don't understand it. Even if all, even if just building this blew up the YouTube algorithm and I could just make a living off of building this, I'm 40 years old and there's swings I wanna take, and there's things that I wanna do. For instance, racing open wheel, and trying to have a shot at racing professionally. It could happen, and I'm working on that, but you've got to take certain swings in your life when the opportunity presents itself, or you'll hate yourself forevermore. So as long as I'm an able-bodied man, I'd like to think I've still got a few decades of building cars left, and I well realize that the internet is very instant gratification, but I need you guys to realize that this is an adventure and I like bringing you guys along and telling the tips, showing the wisdom, telling the stories of the life of cars so all the young people and anybody else aspiring to do things can learn from that too. If you wanna come over here, we can look at the side of it. But the car did burn me out uh, physically, emotionally, everything like that. And it got to a point where I could not keep putting the hours into this that it needed. And I frankly had to stop for a while. Um, because my love and my inspiration as an artist was gone. Gone. <laughs> but it's coming back, guys. So when the F1 hot rod is done in a few weeks, the King Zero will go back to its place of prominence, and I'm cleaning up and moving things around. You guys may have remembered from my tour of, you know, the shop and Genius Garage and, and all the cars that we got here, uh, or I got here. Um, 
you saw it and we got sold the biplane. So the front part of the building room is gonna be dedicated Genius Garage for the high-end race cars. And then back here is gonna be dirty fabrication, heavier stuff, my own silly toys and builds, and then Genius Garage overflow. So for instance, the yellow Corvette is sitting over there and there's the white Tommy prototipo, you can see over on the lift, uh, which is actually for sale right now for Genius Garage because Genius Garage has got good race cars and um, you know, that car's moved up and gotten nice, so we're selling it. So anyway, the King Zero sits, as you guys may have last remembered it. Um, numbers of the panels are in place, finally. They're maybe not totally finished being welded, not finished being smooth ground, planishing hammers, spoons, etc., to get it right. And there's a couple of panels, like this one, and uh, this one and this one, that have not been welded in place yet. So the beauty of the King Zero at this point, it's getting to a place where it's kind of exciting. You've got the final shape, but we gotta get, I gotta get the rest of the body panels on well, completely welded, smoothed out. And then frankly, I know it's just one opening door, but just figuring out properly how to make this open and close and look good and all the seams match up and meet, that's a tall order. And also wanna make the windshield or these windows be able to slide so you can get some air in it. Um, but it's a project, you guys, that just can't be rushed. And frankly, and I'm gonna be straight, I don't care if this makes me sound like a prissy white valley girl from Malibu or something. It wears on a person working long, long, hard hours. Anybody who works with their hand knows that. You come home filthy, you are always filthy, and you can't get going. And, and the thing about this is it's hours upon hours upon hours upon hours, and I'm the one that makes these videos. Right now, my wife, who is yawning, <laughs> is being nice enough to record this, but I have to edit it and get everything out and utilize that with the builds that require a lot of hours. So oftentimes I have to work three times as hard and efficient just to have enough time to be left the hell alone so I can work on a car. So that's what's going on with it, guys. It is a little sad and frustrating because it starts getting some surface rust because it is steel. You can coat it, but I, I, I wasn't ready to prime stuff and I didn't want to get it all oily because then I would have to clean all that up to prime it. So. For the little bit of surface rust that it's gotten, I'll just hit it real quick with the uh, power uh, scotch brights, knock it down, and get to wear it. So for this, coming up in a few weeks, when the F1 hot rod is finished, we can look over there again, um, the King's Air will be going over there. Uh, Genius Garage students are gonna be starting in April and getting going, so their first thing, they're gonna be finishing up the Lycan. So we can do some fun things with that, go out in public, a little bit of cars and coffee tour. Uh, so all the students can come back and have a little fun and see it and talk to people and people get to see it. So that's gonna be a lot of fun. And uh, I'm just getting back to it. You know, one thing I've done and being straight with you guys is, before I did Genius Garage, which of course is the nonprofit, quick plug them on the wall. I have new banners, look at the wall, hooray. Guess who made that? The lovely camera person, i.e. my wife. When you build a nonprofit from the ground up, if it's a legit nonprofit and you're actually doing it to help people, it doesn't pay you. That doesn't pay me. It's just a lot of time to help mentor students um, and help them get the shot I never had. Um, so that's, that's my reward for doing it. But when I started it, I thought the world would be more philanthropic and get it and not remotely as greedy as the world actually is. So a lot of time has gone to that. But what I'm, where I'm going with it is, now that I'm more on my own feet a little bit, Genius Garage has their stuff and I can look at it for the students, I can kind of go back to having fun for myself. And before I started Genius Garage, I had a few cool cars and I'm enjoying sort of building up my little assortment of cars. The, the Gallardo, um, I just fixed the hood today, fixed the latches from when it blew off. This is a blue and white hood. And just for kicks and giggles, uh, while we were here, I took some vinyl and made the uh, logo look like a bow tie and covered that up just for fun. I'll probably drive it for like a day like that. It's like, uh, I like my Jesus wearing a tuxedo t-shirt. It says, I want to be formal, but I'm here to party. Cal Mountain Jr., which is hilarious. Thought about making that decal, but who's going to get painted? It's going to go all back and actually it's better than before. And, um, you know, of course, got the dune buggy and I got the flat nose that I'm going to, or slant nose, and I'm going to start getting fixed up, and the Esprit over there. So I know that I'm obviously not working on the King Zero right now, but I really wanted you guys to come along here this evening and for me to show you that I will be getting back going on that. It's not abandoned. But I need you all to understand that I am an actual real human being. This is not a TV show. This is not a BS stage reality thing. I actually have to make a living and I have other obligations. And 
while I love YouTube and it's done amazing things and given Genius Garage the opportunity to stand on its own two feet and I love connecting with you all, I never dreamed of being a YouTuber. And I don't mean that in the sense of just I never thought it would happen. That's not my dream. So YouTube is a great way to build a community, but my dream is not to have a few million subscribers. My dream is to do amazing things in the real world. And that's why I like to take you guys along. And that's why I'm gonna tell the truth and I'll stand up for values that I think are important. So the Omega car, I'm thinking and hoping that I'll be back on this this year. I wanna do a whole new steering rack, get rid of some slop. I've got some electric feedback with the rear view camera. I have to finish the hood. I wanna test it more because I wanna do a cross country trip in it, averaging over hundred miles a gallon. I think that'd be really neat and do a drive. My blue with white stripes Viper, um, it's getting close to hitting 100,000 miles. I thought it would be neat to do a drive in that. But there's also a life-changing surprise I have for you guys coming up for me later this year that I can't talk about yet. <laughs> um, it's not racing Indy yet, um, but uh, maybe someday. But I can't tell you that. So it's going to be an interesting year. But the King Zero is coming back soon. Um, and I do want to say a positive word about Avalon King. Um, obviously, they sponsored this build. And they're not a current sponsor of the channel, but I do use their product and I like it quite a lot. And I'm looking forward to doing that on the Lamborghini here shortly when I get the paint done and uh, other such things. So a nice shout out to them. But guys, I kind of just wanted to bring you along. Uh, <laughs> come here, look, look at this crap. So like you do a project and your tools are all over the place. And the other thing is my personal tools are up front and I loan my personal tools to students, whether they're building their go-karts or Genius Garage. And I've done it for the last nine years of my life. And my personal tools were how I made a living back when or made all my dreams reality. And like I said, my toolbox, the one with all the stickers, has just gotten destroyed over the years and tools have been missing. And I gotta rebuild the tools, but you guys can see, just come here, look at the mess. Look at the mess. I need parts. Oh, Gavin, you were supposed to put this back. You naughty boy. Where'd it go? I'm gonna get him. Everybody give Gavin more crap. <laughs> Tell him hi. Gavin, would you, silly person kids today anyway so that's it guys trying to clean up and uh get everything moving but it's tough because if and also we had a really cool prototype car just donated to genius graduates which i'll show you guys soon it's from the early 1980s really cool it's mid-engine that's all i'm going to tell you um but every time things like that happen everything has to change and be cleaned and organized and if i have to find tools and get things ready for genius garage takes up my time and day and it makes it hard to do the videos to bring you guys along and it makes it harder for me to stage and showcase all the good things so for everybody that's a fan that misses things like the Omega car and especially the King Zero build your time is coming see I just ruined that <laughs> great I think the 10 millimeter was the first to disappear that's how they escape I'll come back to that tomorrow so that's what's going on guys it is coming back I appreciate you guys being interested um, I will say, however, that I don't appreciate uh, some people in the comments. I do, in fact, read all the comments. A uh, lot of supportive, nice people. Uh, there are some viciously not nice people that are also stupid. <laughs> Call a spade a spade. So I ignore them. But there has been some people that have kind of said nasty things on why or relating to the King Zero not being built right now, which I got to tell you, um, doesn't make me want to work on this anymore. Um, and I frankly don't understand why a lot of people on the internet watching individuals such as myself think they're entitled to tell us what to do or that we're some sort of magical marionette for their amusement. We're not. We're real people, or some of us are. And this is something I do because I love it. So if you think talking crap to me about working on it, that I should be working on it um, because that's the only thing that entertains you and none of the other car things or airplane things or whatever I'm doing is interesting enough for you. I don't care. And you might want to talk to somebody because it's, it's kind of nutty. But anyway, but that's not the norm. You guys are all supportive and so many people have been inspired and I appreciate that, that I keep going. But it's a strange thing doing YouTube and bringing you guys to this side, breaking the fourth wall, coming here, because YouTube is not reality. 
It's what the algorithm wants to stick in front of people, and it's mostly just lowest common denominator basilar human instincts, and a lot of the bad ones. Um, and so doing something creative or meaningful like the King, King Zero, or like the Omega car to be recyclable, low environmental impact, or even just Genius Garage, I'll be frank, it's not something that the internet algorithm cares about. It doesn't. And I know you guys are interested and I appreciate it, but if I just show any Porsche or any Ferrari or any whatever, they get views. But when I start doing things that are totally obscure like the Omega car, it's harder to get views because the algorithm's like, oh, it's not a General Motors new product that we can't sell advertising on. <laughs> anyway, that's kind of it, guys. I should just end it here soon. But um, the engine's getting picked up here for the Sprint car going to Legacy Autosport. I really appreciate those guys. And did you check out the new banners? Yes. There's a Genius Garage. Um, it's kind of annoying and self-aggrandizing to have my name on the wall. But hey, it is YouTube. So branding. And then... Um, over here, I was really uh, proud of this, and my wife designed it for it, but we did a Legacy Autosport banner for uh, Mike's team in the Road to Indy, uh, Sprint Cars, Car Builds, so I really, really appreciate that, and um, that's basically it, guys, but it's coming back. Thanks for watching. It's just a nice night in the shop, and I think my wife is probably going, let's go home. <laughs> so that's it for now, but thanks for watching, um, and I have a very exciting journey and surprise coming up real quick. I'm going on a Casey Putch spirit quest or birthright trip. I don't know, there's no name for what I'm doing, but it's kind of one of those things. And uh, hopefully it's not a terrible idea. So subscribe if you like, unsubscribe if you like. Either way, I'm happy because you're getting what you want. And that's what this is all about. And not an, I don't mean that in a facetious way, but like, do what you gotta do. I'll see you guys next time.